everybody. I wanted to talk to y'all today about something that I struggle with sometimes and it's probably been my downfall most of my life and it's how quick-tempered I can be um, and how angry I can get. And since I've now rededicated myself to Jesus and studying his ways, anger is not one of his ways. Um, there is a there is a righteous anger, but that's not what I'm really talking about today. I'm going to talk about the angry that we get when we get cut off on the road or the anger that we get because our kids are acting cray cray or the angry that we get because someone has talked real bad about us and it wasn't true or the angry we get because we have some kind of anxiety issue and we just blow off the handle. Those kinds of anger, the everyday anger, you know, we something with our job or our spouse or our children, the stuff that makes us really angry and sometimes starts out with something annoyed, um, turns to frustration, turns to furious, enraged, and boiling mad. How angry are we? And what can we do about it? If we're trying to do the right thing and we have this issue, then what do we do? So I was studying this for myself. And so sometimes when I'm studying something for myself, sometimes it's just, I feel like it's just for me, but sometimes the Lord lays it on my heart to do something else for others um, to share and that maybe somebody else is struggling with it too. So this is what I have come up with. I just kind of put together a slideshow. I also used a couple clips of some of my testimony. Um, and I will just forewarn you, I am emotional in one of them. It's so embarrassing. I almost didn't put it on here, but the Holy Spirit said, yes, you need to share this. It's important. Other people need to hear that this, you know, they're not alone. They're not the only ones dealing with this kind of stuff. So, okay, here we go. Um, how do we deal with anger uh, biblically or what, what do we need to know about anger and how to fix it? So the world teaches us to react according to what has happened to us. This is so very wrong. Let me just say, if I reacted to other people the way that, according to what happens to me, oh yeah, I'd be in so much trouble. I'd be in jail, that's for sure. Because people have done me pretty wrong. People have done me pretty dirty. And I won't lie, you know, like it makes me mad. And I used to act according to what the world said. And an eye for an eye, two for a two. But we all know what happens with that. Hurt people hurt people. See, I used to have this problem when I said I had a heart problem, like I did, like I got so good at stuffing it all down. If I stuffed it too much, then this wall would come up, you know, and it would block out emotion and I would, I didn't like it and I would shove it down, shove it down, shove it down so I didn't cry because I didn't want to cry. And then when I shoved it down, it would turn into anger. So my only two reactions used to be I was either going to cry or I was going to be a meanie. And, you know, that was my responses to every, you know, anything, if it was hurtful or sad or, or, um, anger, whatever emotion I had two responses. I was either going to cry or I was going to stuff it down and become, ug become ugly and snappy. My fruit was just bad. You know, my fruit was bad. And that's the lesson God gave me. I saw it out. You know, I was like, how, you know, how do I curve that when things get hard with um, my little guy and he's just on a tangent for no reason at all and you know screaming horrible things <laughs> at me or or you know just blatantly um, defiant and it's and I'm praying every day you know for him and my family and my kids and and trying and I'm always trying to be a good example and I've been being really patient and kind and God has helped me with that so much but you know, there's still those moments that, you know, you, it hurts. And that pain sometimes will hit me so hard that I almost shut it down, you know, and I have to really, and I have to really pray. That's why I have to focus so much on praying to keep my armor on because if those things hit me too hard and it gets, and it, and it causes that wall to jump up, then that's when... I'll push it down and shove it down. And when, when I do that, that shuts off not only just that emotional part of it to not be angry, it shuts off the loving part of it. It shuts everything off. And I'm claiming my healing and, and deliverance from that. You know.
in order to break these chains, in order to change the way that we see anger, we have to renew our minds. In Romans 12, 2, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And we also know that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. So in order to restore our faith, to renew our minds, we must go into the words. The Bible says love is not easily provoked. It says that love does not anger quickly. It doesn't say that we won't get angry. It just says don't fly off the handle with a short fuse. James 1, 19 through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So now that we know that God doesn't desire for us to be quick-tempered, what do we do to prevent being so easily provoked? We have to understand the what, the where, and the why of anger. First off, what is anger? What is anger? What does it mean to get angry? Well, it's an emotion or it's a product of our feelings. Anger is defined as strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. Our anger lies somewhere in our mind, will, and emotion. So when we're faced with anything, any situation that could cause anger, um, depending on what we think about that thing will directly affect the way that we feel about that thing. And the way we feel about that thing will directly determine what we do about that thing. What we think about what anything will be determined by what we've been taught. So we have to change the way we think about things. We have to change and put our mindset in the way that Jesus thought about things. So Don't let the sun go down on your anger. How many times have you heard that before? That's actually a verse, Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. So what he's saying in the Bible there is that if you actually let the sun go down your angle, anger, that's what gives the devil the foothold in your life is when you let the sun go down. I love that verse, and that really helps to remind you, never go to sleep when you're angry. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. What I mean by foothold, when I say the devil has a foothold, the foothold is like chains. For instance, in anger, I feel like when you let the sun go down on your anger, which I have so, so many times, okay? What, I, what it means by foothold is when you go to bed and you don't apologize or you don't work it out with that person and you haven't forgiven them, then when you go to bed, the next day you're still angry. You still have, you may have pushed her down. You may have blown it off for the day. You may not be actively acting out of anger, but inside you feel anger and that puts a stronghold. I feel like it puts chains around your heart. It makes it almost impossible to love. And the only way to break those chains, the only key to unlock that heart of yours, and that's what I've come to, that's where I am now, is he's unlocking my heart. He's breaking my heart for what breaks his. When before I felt like my, my heart was just shut off, I couldn't even think of or be compassionate for people because my heart was so hardened, it was, it was locked up, and it was all because of anger. We cannot allow external or internal things to control us. Getting angry is not a sin in itself, and it may be actually appropriate for certain circumstances. Such thing as righteous anger. I'm not going into that today, but there is. But being controlled by your anger is a sin. Isaiah 40, 29-31 gives us empowerment and really helps us to see that we are not in this alone and that we are not going to be able to do this of our own fruition. It says, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. 
So be encouraged that we do have the ability and the strength because the Lord has given us the strength. He is right there with us. When we're weak and we're tired, he's right there with us to lift us up and give and help us to soar high on the wings like eagles. Oh, it's so beautiful. So be encouraged. We do have the ability to do this and to kick this anger thing in the tail. Proverbs 19.11 says, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Earlier, we talked a little bit about, you know, being how the world taught us how to react according to what has happened to us. You know, if somebody hits you, you hit them back. If somebody curses you out, you curse them out. Somebody cuts you off, you speed up really fast and you cut them off. You know, the quote, hurt people, hurt people I used earlier. It's a perfect label for this epidemic of that whole eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth mentality that's really rampant, running rampant right about now. We must refuse to allow our emotions to control us. Proverbs 29, 11 says, fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. So be wise, bring calm, don't be foolish, and vent out to rage. Again, be encouraged because Ephesians 1 is a great example of the power that we have in Christ to be able to accomplish and overcome some of these things that try to rear their ugly heads back at us every once in a while, like anger for me. It says, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. And when you believe in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance that he promised, that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so that we would praise and glorify him. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is now the, its body. And it was made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So he has filled us, Yahushua, he has filled us with himself. He's given us the power to overcome anger. He's given us the power to walk in love just like he did. And I pray this helps y'all as much as it helped me. And shalom.